Hello, my loves. It is time for episode six of season one of Better Call Saul. The last episode ended with a little extra mic, so I'm wondering if this episode is going to go right back into that, if it's going to be a little heavier of a mic episode. Try not to get my hopes up for that, but I'm just interested to see because we all know I love Mike. So let's get into it and find out. Boop. Yes! His daughter. That's what I was assuming, but I guess I don't know that for sure. She called them Mike, but I know some adult kids do that if they're estranged or whatever. I just have a feeling that's the mother of his grandchild, but I guess maybe it could be his, like, daughter-in-law or something, you know? Ow! What happened before we got to this train station? <laughs> All right, come on down. Pop Pop's getting tired. Oh, oh me. You take a little break. A little break. His shoulder, ah. So how do you like it? Out west? I like it. Wide open spaces? Wide open spaces. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. You know, adjusting. And Kaylee? She still asks about him. Where's daddy? She just misses him. Yeah. So maybe that is his daughter-in-law. I don't know if they're actually married, but you know what I mean. Like the mother of his grandchild. Before he died, there was this phone call. 2.30 in the morning, I wake up and Maddie's not in bed. And I hear him. He's talking downstairs. I mean, he was angry. He was really angry. What was he saying? I don't know. I couldn't hear it. But the next morning, I called him out. What the hell was that about? What's going on? And he wouldn't talk to me. But I think... I think he was talking to you. I can't recall any late night heart to hearts with him, not around then. Maybe it was a CI or a case. Maddie's gone. That's really all there is to it. Yeah. I guess that's that. I gotta get Kaylee her dinner, put her to bed. Okay. Well, if you want me to drop by and keep an eye on him, I want to help. See you around. Uh, doesn't feel like that went too well. Francisco. Yeah. You know this town? Yeah, sure. Oh, well. Okay, a little sting here. Okay. Uh... You're gonna wanna take it easy. Let it heal. There's a Walgreens, couple blocks over in Louisiana. Maybe go get yourself a sling. You don't have one? He's a vet, dude. <laughs> I can uh, throw some pills in for the pain. This stuff's essentially Vicodin. I'll give it to you for 25 a pill. I'm going to ask for the man. Tell you what, take a couple in the house. In case you change your mind. 25 a pill? Go f yourself. Lawyer. It's just a couple of questions. Lawyer. You're not under arrest. I gotta say, I uh, expected more cooperation from you on this, cop to cop. Lawyer. He said what he said. Fine. What lawyer? James McGill, here to see my client. 
What? You look like Matlock. No, I look like a young Paul Newman dressed as Matlock. <laughs> so what happened? The mayor didn't give you enough stickers? <laughs> Those two cops out there are from Philadelphia. They've come a long way to see me. When they come in here, we're all going to have a little chat. And when it's over, the young one who's been writing in his little notebook, he's going to take it and put it in his jacket. And when he does that, I want you to take that coffee and spill it on him. And when, why, pray tell, would I do that? Because I'm asking you to. It's the only reason you're here. So I'm here because you want me to assault a police officer. <laughs> I am asking you to take a few ounces of lukewarm coffee and spill it on him. I doubt that satisfies the definition of assault, but hey, you're the lawyer. Right. How silly of me. <laughs> I love these two together. Hey, I hate to remind you of this, but you owe me one. The assist I gave you with the missing persons problem. I'm going to behave like an honest to God, law abiding, licensed attorney. Because clearly you need one with whatever the hell is going on here. And you're going to be happy as hell that I'm here. But this little Juan Valdez bump and dump? No. <laughs> hey, gentlemen, we're prepared to indulge you. I think we should go with Mike's plan. I just trust Mike. Let's start at the beginning, okay? We're talking Book of Genesis. <laughs> Detective Sanders and I work for the Philadelphia Police Department. As did Mr. Ermintraut for nearly 30 years. Philadelphia, go Eagles. Mr. Ermintraut had a son, Matt. He too was with Philly PD. There is my confirmation. About nine months ago, he responded to a shots fired call in some west side rat trap. Matt went in with his partner, Officer Troy Hoffman. They had Sergeant Jack Fenske backing them up. Unfortunately, things got out of hand. The three of them were ambushed and uh, Matt didn't make it out the shooter got away and we chased a few leads shook up the usual suspects came up short we kept beating the bushes kept coming up dry until three months ago that's when Hoffman and Fenske both turned up dead in a vacant lot out in Nicetown when did you come out of here to Albuquerque I think it was the very next day yeah the day after Hoffman and Fenske died huh you didn't think to uh, stick around once you heard the news I don't think I heard the news till I was west of Kansas City Still, you, uh, you didn't come back for the funerals, correct? Even though Hoffman was Matt's partner? He said he didn't know them, though. That night at the bar, uh, did you talk to Hoffman or Finsky at all? Sorry, I got nothing. They weren't my people. Yeah. That's what he says. Are we done here? We're done here, yeah. Oh, hey! Oh! Oh, shit. Oh, Jeez. Sorry. Come on. Sorry. I can get most of it. Hey, I got it. I got it. Thank Sorry. you. Oh, very sly. What's so important in there that we had to pull that third rate Marx Brothers routine? I mean, he's going to know that Mike took it, though. <clears throat> How did you know that I would uh, spill that coffee? What the hell's that? What's <laughs> yeah, supposed to mean, huh? In case you missed it, your friends from Philly back there, they think you killed two cops. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm just so happy they're together now. <laughs> I just feel like the cop is obviously going to know Mike took that out of his jacket when he went to do that. So won't he be, like, way more suspicious now? You call the cops? What? Philadelphia PD. Did you call him? Yeah, I did. Why? You don't think it's strange? First Matt, then not six months later, his partner and his sergeant? Mike... What if the same person, if the, what if the piece of shit who got mad, he got them too? And what exactly did you tell him? Yeah, what info did... Matt was dirty, is that what you told I... him? How could you possibly think that? That's your husband, the father of your child. I didn't say that. I, I told him I found money. After Kaylee and I moved here when I was unpacking, it was in the lining of an old suitcase. Five, six thousand from God knows where. 
I mean, we were basically paycheck to paycheck. Where the hell did he get it? Why didn't you ask me? Why didn't you come to me? I couldn't. I knew what it would do to you. First he's murdered, and then for you to think... And you wouldn't talk to me. Every night you were drinking yourself unconscious like you were the only one who lost him. Look, I don't care. He was dirty, he was clean, I don't care. What difference would it make? I'd still love him. I'd still miss him. He'd still be gone. What was that phone call? Before he died, don't bullshit me. No, it was between me and my son. So you're admitting it was you? He wasn't dirty. You get that through your head. My son wasn't dirty. Wow. I feel like he wouldn't have gotten that aggressively defensive if he was dirty, you know? Like, it makes me think that he's right, he wasn't. Maybe he caught the other two doing something dirty and so they killed him and that's why Mike killed them. Impressive. He seems to have a lot of guilt about what happened to Matt, though. Maybe he was dirty with the other two or something, and then he found out and Matt ended up dying, and then he killed the other two for revenge, but... I don't know. Maybe the phone call was like Matt yelling at him or something like them getting in an argument because Matt found out he was dirty and then the other two killed him to silence him. But like Matt was or Mike wasn't on board for that. Sorry, I'm just making theories. Brother. I know. I know it was you. Get your cab. I'm good. I'm good. Don't worry. Anyway, I sold my car, so I'm walking. <laughs> Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's where I'm headed. Take care, my friend. Take care. So he was planning on leaving before anything happened with those two, because I don't think it's happened yet. Oh no, they're gonna ambush him or something because he knows. And that's how he gets shot in the shoulder. Hey, Mike. How embarrassing. It's two against one and the one is drunk as fuck and you still lose. <laughs> oh, so embarrassing. Come on. Uh, walk. Come on, don't, don't be an ass. Come, come on, on get let's the car ready. It's cold out here. Come on, come on Mike. Come on. Is mine. Later. We don't want you to shoot your foot off now, do we? Tell me Mike is pretending. He's pretending to be drunk and that gun is empty. Something you want to say to us? He killed him. He killed Maddie. Mm. He got him in that crack house. And you staged it. You made it look like a junkie with a gun. But it was you. And I'm gonna prove it. Mike is pretending his gun is empty. They're gonna try to use his own gun on him so it looks like a suicide. But it's not gonna work. And Mike's gonna have another gun. But I don't know how he ended up shot in the shoulders, so... What? Come on! That was not the arm movement of a drunk man! He couldn't live with it. Not dying the way he did. It's too much for the old man, so my kid decided to eat his gun. He's drinking himself to death. We're doing him a favor. Smart. That's what I would have done if oh. I were you. <laughs> yes! I 
know Mike. I know him. Try to kill a man with his own gun. Try to kill Mike with his own gun. Are you stupid? <laughs> Matt wasn't dirty. I was. Everyone was in that precinct. That's how it worked. You turn in your buddy, you're screwing yourself. And you went along. I did. He did, he did. Fenske got to Hoffman early. Kickbacks from some gang or another. Hoffman went to Maddie, offered to cut him in. Only fair, right? They were partners. And Matt did what you would think. He agonized. And then he came to me, wanted to go to the IA, do the right thing, shut him down. Oh, my God, did you let him? No. I told him... You know what a cop fears most? More than getting shot, more than anything. Prison. Oh. Getting locked up with everybody you put away. Yeah. You threaten a cop with that, you make him dangerous. And that's what I told him. If you go to the IA, if you didn't look like you're going. You had a wife, a kid, take the money, do something good with him. <laughs> I tried, but he wouldn't listen. <laughs> My boy was stubborn, and he was gonna get himself killed. So I told him, I did it too, that I was like Hoffman, getting by, and that's what you heard that night. He put me up on a pedestal. And I had to show him that I was down in the gutter with the rest of them. Don't make me cry, Mike. Broke my boy. I broke my boy. He took the money, but he hesitated even looking like you're doing the right thing to those two meant that he wasn't solid, that he couldn't be trusted. I got Maddie to take the money and they killed him two days later. Even never done it, not even to save himself. I was the only one that could get him to debase himself like that. And it was for nothing. I made him lesser. I made him like me. And the bastards killed him anyway. Oh, I hate seeing Mike sad. <laughs> Hoffman and Fenske. If they killed Maddie, who killed them? Oh, put it together, lady. You know what happened. The question is, can you live with it? That was the fastest episode ever. Wow. That was such a good scene. Painful scene, but... Oof, that was such a good episode.
I just truly love Mike as a character. I he's so good. Finding out what happened to his son was heartbreaking, especially because I just can't handle seeing a sad Mike. But it definitely adds context to his character later on, like in Breaking Bad, because he cared so much about providing for his granddaughter. And like, I feel like he would, you know, want to help out anyways, because he's clearly a good grandpa. But it it makes extra sense, given that his son was dead. You know, I don't think we ever found out about that in Breaking Bad, that his son was dead. If so, I'm just forgetting. But also with that added layer of you know guilt him feeling like him feeling how he feels about what happened to his son especially it just it makes a lot of sense and adds extra context to why he was trying so hard to provide for his granddaughter later on so that was just so interesting and you know very sad to watch but i just love finding out more about mike's backstory and getting more context on his character and everything and i know i'm only seven episodes in and we have so so much further to go and all that but that was definitely my favorite episode so far and it's probably just because you know i'm the most attached to mike because i've had a whole other show with him so getting a mike centric episode obviously i'm going to be more emotionally involved and whatnot I'm sure as the show goes on and I find out more about all these other characters and everything like that will change. But yeah, as far as these first se seven episodes, that's the best one so far. That was incredible. I'm thrilled that I was right about that scene before it even happened. It just like I saw it all play out in my head. You know, Mike is pretending to be drunk. His gun is empty because he knows they're going to take it and try to use it on him. And I don't know, I just thought that maybe I was being a little bit too hopeful or something, but thrilled to know that I know Mike. I know him. <laughs> that was really cool. Really fun to see. I mean, not fun. It's very sad. You know, it's just, again, seeing sad Mike is heartbreaking, but it's just, you know, fun in its own way seeing Mike be in control of a situation, you know, especially when the guys who murdered his son thought they were in control and oh, how the turntables have, as Michael would say, different Michael. But yeah, I just enjoyed every second of that. It flew by. I thought we were maybe like halfway through. I could not believe that it ended right then. I am so excited that Mike and Jimmy slash Saul are more involved with each other now. We're past the sticker stage. I just love seeing them together. <laughs> and I'm hoping this means that Mike is going to be a much bigger part of the show now. So that's very exciting. I am just giddy and sad but giddy after that episode and so excited to keep going with this show so yeah great episode meet me in the comments let's discuss let me know if you guys saw that coming with mike if you knew that he was pretending or if that was a shock for you if you're watching this on youtube i would be so grateful if you could like comment and subscribe hit that notification bell all of those things are such a huge help for the channel and would just mean the world to me if you want to check out my full-length reactions, you can head on over to Patreon. The link is in the description box below. And thank you all for being here. It truly is an honor that you spend your time with me. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.